11 Truth Church and happy Mother's Day. Come on, let's give it up for all the moms this morning. And now who is excited to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday? Yeah, we're so excited to have you here. Just want to say happy Mother's Day. We're going to go into a time of praise and worship. And then Pastor Tammy is bringing a powerful word today. So it's going to be an awesome day in the house of the Lord. We're so glad you're here. Go ahead, greet your neighbor, um, shake someone's hand, and we're going to go into praise and worship this morning. Broken whole, I believe that the curse of sin was broken. 
When they roll away the stone I believe, I believe, I believe Come on, say As I bow before you, Lord I will rise in confidence I will see your goodness, Lord In the land I'm living in No matter where I go No matter Falling. When we fall down on our knees, I believe that the name will go walking in the blind and cold sea. I believe that the gates of hell tremble when the church begins to see. I believe, I believe, I believe. As I bow before you. Church, say the light is come. Oh, sing it to the nation. Look at what the Lord is done. Sing it to the daughters. Sing it to the sons. Hold it every generation. Oh, look at what the Lord. declared this morning say and no matter where I go and no matter There's still power in the blood of Jesus today, and we're going to sing about that right here, right now. So let's press it. Now I was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. Sin separated. Was far too wide from the far side of the cast. You had me in your side, so you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. There at the cross. 
cross and made the dead out Broke my chains, freed my soul For the first time I had hope Thank you, Jesus, for the good about we say Thank you, Jesus, it has won I found 
We're so thankful that it's undeniable your presence is in this place right now. I ask you, Lord, to awaken every heart and every mind to the moment that we're standing in. We've been presented with a divine opportunity for life change. So, Father, my prayer right now is there's not one person that misses what you're trying to pour out on us right now. God, I thank you that we've been encapsulated by your presence this morning and miracles are happening in this room, God. So, Lord, I ask you once again, let every mind, let every heart be quickened, let every body be healed, renewed, refreshed. And today, God, we know that not only is your presence changing lives, but there's a word that's about to go forth that's going to cause people to come alive again. It's going to resurrect dreams. It's going to stir the fight in people. There's going to be a release of the Holy Ghost on people's lives today. We thank you that the enemy is bound and victory and freedom is loosed in this house in Jesus' name. And I believe that with all of my heart. And if you do, would you say amen and give God praise? Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Welcome to Love and True Church. Are you excited to be here? I'm telling you right now, what a powerful time of worship today. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, come on now. Let's try that again. Happy Mother's Day. Come on. That's right. Hey, we're so excited. We're so thankful. A couple of things we're doing today to honor our mothers. Uh, as you leave the service in just a little bit, uh, every mom, we have a gift for you. You can get that on the way out today. We also have a photo booth out there for you to take a picture with your mom. So stop by there after church is over today. Get a little photo made as well. Some exciting things are happening here. Here's what I want to do. We have a lot of stuff going on. I want to take just a moment and give you a rundown of the next couple of weeks. How many of you ready for the rundown? All right. I'm going to need the rest of you to wake up today. I'm going to give you the rundown. Here's the rundown. If you don't come on Wednesday nights, you should come Wednesday because we go just deep in the spirit and God does some amazing things. And this Wednesday night, Pastor Eddie's going to be preaching, so make sure you pack the house out. Then this coming Saturday, we are having our monthly corporate prayer from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. right here in Auditorium A. Everyone is welcome to come and join us. We just pray. Believe God for revival. We see a lot of miracles happen in those prayer meetings, so make sure you're here for that. And then next Sunday, Pastor Eddie is starting a two-week series titled, What's That Sound? And for two weeks, he's going to be breaking down the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which leads us to Pentecost Sunday on May the 28th. And you know what else is happening on May the 28th? You want to know? I'm going to tell you what else is happening on May the 28th. We're having our family fun day. So that's a, always a great time to hang out. Bring your lawn chair. That is going to start. May the 28th is going to start at 12.30, not a minute sooner, at 12.30. And we'll have food and fun and all those things will be provided that day. So make sure you're a part of that. Hey, look, I know there are so many of you that have bought into the vision of this house here, changing lives to change our world. And I want to personally say thank you for supporting the vision with your time, your talent, and your treasure. And as you remain faithful in that, we make a difference locally and globally. So let me tell you today how you can give. The easiest way to give is at loveandtruthchurch.com forward slash give, or we have giving stations here at all of our exits for convenience. Also at the end of the service today, our prayer team will be up front. They are ready to minister to you, so take advantage of that opportunity. Now, that was a mouthful. I have said a lot. 
But right here, I want to pause for a moment because this is very special. Love and Truth Church, will you help me welcome all of the guests that are joining us right now? Come on, raise the roof in this place. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm telling you, it is such an honor to have you, and it is always our heart to honor our guests. So let me tell you how we do that. Every month, for every first-time guest, we make a donation to a nonprofit organization in your name as a way to honor you. We literally send your name with a check to these nonprofit organizations. This month, we're donating to the Star Center here in Jackson, and their mission is simple. It's to help any person with any disability discover their potential. So let's make sure that we bless them this month. But also, it's your first, second, and your third visit. We have a special gift for you, and that is located out in our guest services area. The way you receive that after your church is over take your connection card out to the guest services area right across from this main exit turn that card in there and get that gift as a token of appreciation so now that we have these out if you don't have yours out get it out we're going to fill it out together if you need a pen slip your hand up and our ushers will get one to you quickly so let me just give you the breakdown on this as you fill the front side out you'll notice at the bottom that's where you indicate if you're a first, second, or third time guest, on the reverse side of that card, there's a place for you to share life change, sign up for next steps, and share your prayer requests and praise reports with us. We do pray over these cards every single week, so make sure you share that with us. Now, unless you are a guest, once you finish filling this card out after service today, leave it in your seat. Our ushers come through and they get these immediately and they get them to a safe place. The band's gonna play to give us a minute to finish these, and then you better get ready. Are you ready? I don't know if you're ready for what's about to happen in this room, but you're about to receive a life-changing word. God bless you. Thank you for being here today. Some call you Mama. Some call you Mommy. Some call you the most smartest. Some call you so funny. Some call you homework helper. Some call you higher, higher. Some call you their hero and also their taxi driver. Some call you Nana or Abuela or Mima. Some call you Mother. Please stop spoiling them all. Some call you a mentor. Some call you a friend. Some call you God's kindness for the mother they never had. Some call you from the beginning. Some call you much later. Some call you guardian or foster parent on paper. But paper never stopped you from showing up open-handed. You were no less the mother and the love God intended. Some call you joy, some call you graceful, some call you strength, some call you faithful, some call you constant, some call you care, some call you always, some call you there. Some call you the greatest, some call you the bomb. But 
I. I call you blessed. I call you mom. If you are a mother or grandmother and you are in this room, will you please stand at this time so we can honor you? Come on, church. I need you all to know that if it wasn't for these ladies, it wasn't for moms, none of us would be here. So I want you to do a little bit better than that. Much, much better. Hey, remain standing. If you are a sister, if you are an aunt, if you are a girlfriend, if you are a daughter, will you please also stand with us at this time? Regardless of your mom status, I want each and every woman and female in this room to know that you were uniquely created by design for a specific purpose by our creator. I want you to know that you are a nurturer, you are a helper, you are a challenger, you are a warrior. I want you to look at me in the eyes this morning. I want you to know that this world is a much better place because you're in it. Amen. Give it up one more time. You guys can be seated. Today, we are going to talk about three characters in the Bible in a very true story, two of which are mothers, one mother to a nation, one an ordinary housewife, both just as powerful. We're going to talk about two warriors and a wild goat, say, say, ooh, the wild goat. I love this so much. Open your Bibles to Judges chapter four, and while you're turning there, I would just like to say how honored that I am to stand on this platform and have the opportunity to speak to you this morning. I am 100% aware of how sacred this platform is and how fiercely the anointing on this platform is guarded. And so I'm just to Pastor Eddie and Pastor Sherry, who I hope are listening or watching. I love them with my whole heart, and I do not take this opportunity lightly in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen. Okay, are you guys in Judges chapter 4? I need you to be there because I'm going to talk about a story that I am not sure everyone in this room is familiar with. I have been serving God for close to mm, years. And I had never really heard a story, I mean, a message about this fierce woman named Deborah. So we're going to read Judges chapter 4, verse 4 through 10. Are y'all ready for this? I don't think you are, but we'll go ahead and do it anyway. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lipidoth, was leading in Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim, and the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. She sent for Barak, son of Abinanom, from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, The Lord God of Israel commands you, Go take 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulon and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will send Sisera, the enemy, the commander of Jabin's army and his chariots to the troops of, to the Kishon River, and I'm going to give the enemy into your hands. Barak says to Deborah, if you go with me, I will go, but if you don't go with me, I won't go. Uh -huh. Deborah says to Barak, certainly I will go with you, said Deborah, but because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours, for the Lord will de deliver Sisera, your enemy, into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulun and Naphtali, and 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went with him. Today, we're going to talk about a warrior woman named Deborah. I need you to know, to preface the story, that when we pick up in the book of Judges, we're picking up in the middle of a cycle that the children of Israel just couldn't seem to get themselves out of. 
all through the Old Testament, we'll read it, where they will turn their hearts from God and worship idols that they were not created to worship. They worship these idols, and then, because that's sin, it has consequences. God would come in and discipline his children, and it normally came in the form of an oppression. While the children of Israel went out, were on oppression, they would cry out to God. Y'all are looking at me, but I can relate with this, as many of us in the room can. The children of Israel would cry out to God, and God would send a deliverer. In the book of Judges, he raises up a judge. So the enemy that the Lord is using is Sisera. The Bible repeatedly says that he has 900 chariots that are retrofitted with iron, and they cruelly oppressed the children of Israel. So the Lord raised up Deborah to deliver them. This is what we know about Deborah. Deborah was a prophet. What does that mean? That means she heard the word of the Lord, and she spoke to God's children on, on behalf of him. She was his representative in the earth. She was a judge. What does that mean? That means that the entire nation of Israel came to her to seek wisdom and to settle disputes. Some other judges in the book of Judges that you may be more familiar with are judges like Gideon and Samson. We rarely hear about this woman, Deborah, what's so cool about her. And she was the only judge in the book of Judges that was referred to as a prophet and a judge. As a matter of fact, she ranks amongst some of the mightiest generals with the title prophet and judge, and that is only next to Moses and Samuel. She was a mother of Israel. Judges chapter 5, verse 6 to 7 says, In the days of Shamgar of Anath, in the days of Jael, the highways were abandoned. Travelers took winding paths. Villagers would not fight for themselves until I, Deborah, arose. She was a mother to an entire nation. Isn't this what moms do? They walk into a room and they make crooked ways straight. They make you pick up your stuff. They get everybody in order. What do you mean somebody's picking on you at school? No, boy, you stand up for yourself. No, sister, you stand up for yourself. That's what moms do. They impart courage. And that's what Deborah was doing for an entire nation. She was leading Israel at this time. She held court underneath a palm tree, and she was uber influential. She was the most influential woman at this time. Her influence, let me see, surpasses that of Oprah Winfrey. That's a lot of influence, because you know it's Oprah. We know that she summons Barack and gives him a directive to go into war. You have got to have some clout in order to call a military leader and give a directive for war where people's lives will likely be lost, but where stuff is going to happen. I want you to know that every single person in this room today is leading someone. And you may say to me, Pastor Tammy, I'm not a leader, I'm a follower. Stick me on the wall, stick me behind the scenes. I just wanna follow and just stay to myself. John Maxwell um, describes leadership as simply influence. Every single person in this room, man, woman, teenager, and child has influence on someone. And so today we're going to let Deborah challenge us in our leadership so that we can make the most impact for the kingdom that he intended for us to do. We're going to let Deborah challenge us to lead in spite of obstacles. What obstacles are you facing right now? Leadership is taking responsibility when others make excuses. What are your excuses? What are you facing down? What do you have in front of you that you know you have to do, but you're just putting it off and procrastinating because it's an obstacle to you? Deborah's obstacle was that she was a woman. And in that day, women did not lead. Women had a specific purpose, a specific place, if you will, and that was in the home. 
They would cook the food, they would take care of the kids, they would do all the things that women are supposed to do while the men did man things. She could have used this as an excuse in her leadership to back down to revoke her leadership position, but she didn't. She led confidently in spite of this obstacle. I need you to know that in this day, women did not have intellectual rights, they did not have property rights, and they certainly did not have spiritual rights, but Deborah led anyway. She was a leader. Let's turn our obstacles into opportunities and see what God can do. Let us be challenged today by Deborah to be trustworthy with the hearts of the people that look to us for leadership. Trust is the essence of leadership. If you want to grow your leadership, if you want more influence, be more trustworthy. Deborah was trustworthy to the heart with the hearts of those who looked to her. I don't believe that there was a crowning for her. I don't believe there was a ceremony. I don't believe that there was a coronation for her. I believe Deborah led underneath a palm tree and her influence grew with every sound judgment and every word of the Lord. You have to know today what is in your hands. You have to be faithful with the little things. You have to steward them properly and God will make you ruler over much. I believe because she was faithful under a palm tree, God raised up military leaders who would follow her directives. Deborah spoke the truth yes, in love. We have a mantra that we say here around Love and Truth Church amongst our staff that clarity is kindness. Amen. If someone speaks clearly to you, they're being con no matter what they say, if it's a correction, if it's a redirection, if it's, if it's a rebuke, if it's clear, they're being kind to you, okay? So we have that mantra that we say around here. She looks at Barack when she knows he's scared, he's already expressed it. And she says to him very kindly, certainly, yes, Barack, I'll go with you. I will go with you into war. She did not emasculate him. She did not berate him when he vocalized his fear. I think in our culture today, I'm just going to say it because I have the microphone and I'm standing up here. We have got to stop emasculating our men in this culture. There's, there's no tug of war. We can both succeed, male and female. It, and and just, just my two cents. I think it begins in childhood. And, you know, kids are my favorite form of humans. So I'm just going to speak to that. I've raised three boys. And they're all here today. And they are my, if you know me, like, that's my kids, right? Boys and girls are different. Boys are designed to, like, hunt bugs in the yard and, and get dirty and go on adventures and, and wrestle. You get, you get my grown children alone in a room and they're grown men now and there will be a wrestling match before the night is over. We got to let our boys be boys in that regard and let them do what they're designed to do, which is be a boy. That was my two cents. You are welcome. She spoke to Barack kindly. She said, I'll go with you. I, I see that you're scared, and I'm going to go with you. I'm going to impart courage to you, and we're going to do this thing. Yes. But she also spoke truth to him. She said, because of your wavering, because of your indecision, because you've let fear drive this directive of yours, the victory is not going to go to you. It's going to go to a woman. Okay. She spoke clear. She spoke kind. She spoke truth. This is the consequence of your decision. Let Deborah encourage us today to know the word, to speak the word, and to do the word. How do you do that? The number one way is right here. And I'm going to challenge you probably every time I get up on this platform, I'm going to bring this challenge. Because you can read this morning, noon, and night. 
And it's alive, and it's active, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. But if you're not digging in it, if you're not studying it out, you're missing some really good meat. When I first read this message, and I read that Deborah said, I'll go with you, but hey, you ain't getting the victory. I thought, dang, Deborah just dropped the mic on him. I did. I was like, okay, girl. But then when I read it and I studied it out, I realized she was not emasculating him or berating him at all. She was speaking kind to him. Amen. She was speaking truth. She was imparting power to him. Okay. I want to challenge us today to take our leadership to the next level. Right. Deborah can challenge us to be a warrior, warrior women and men in this room. Amen. Women did not go into battle that, in that day at all. Like, this was not a common thing that you would find Deborah going to Kadesh with Barak. It just didn't happen. But she was so confident in the word of the Lord, and she was so loyal to Barak that she went into battle with him. A good leader will never ask you to do something that they would not do themselves. You know, I, I like to think of it like this because what I see here in the context of my life is uh, Deborah jumped in the boat with Barack. Okay, there's a teaching that I sit under and I love and it's changed my life. But one of the main rules of this ministry is when you pray with someone, you don't jump in the boat with them. Like they need to say whatever they want to say, whatever they need to say. We need to see, we need to hear, we need to listen. And I believe that. But I'm going to tell you what. I, I cannot stop myself from jumping in the boat. <laughs> I just can't do it. I mean, you tell me something, I'm in. Like, I, I'm in your boat. You, all you got to do is say the word. And I'm somebody that you want in the boat with you. We got to be willing to jump in the boat with somebody. When's the last time we jumped in the boat with somebody that's other than me? Other than my immediate family? When's the last time we jumped in the boat when somebody said, I, I, I just can't get out of the bed today, and we just show up at their door? When's the last time we bothered somebody? I, I was going to call you, but I didn't want to bother you. Excuses. We got to jump in the boat. We got to be boots on the ground. We need some boat jumping up in here. <laughs> Listen, I love Barack and Deborah's relationship. Both were warrior, warriors, both were seasoned, both were fierce and capable, but they portrayed a mutual respect and trust for each other. I love it. I think it comes from perspective. I think they understood that there is no competition in the kingdom of God nobody in this room is in competition with you. If you find yourself in competition for a position, for a leadership role, for anything in the church, I need you to know that that is a poverty mentality. Because what you're doing is you're saying, God, there's not enough of you. There's not enough to go around. So I have to fight my way. I need to tell you, and I'm going to say it loud for those in the back. There is no ladder in the kingdom of God. If you want to go high, you got to go low. If you want to be first, you got to be last. It's an upside down kingdom. We all have one common goal. When we focus on that goal, we all get better. What is the goal? To defeat the enemy on behalf of the children of God. That is our goal. If everybody in this room had the same goal, we would tear the gates off hell. I don't know if we'd want to do that, but we could make some, we could make some kind of damage. <laughs> I think we need to leave the gates on. Um, sorry. Barack was a seasoned warrior. He was no stranger to war. But there was something about this one that had him in his head. He was fearful. He knew what he was up against. The Bible repeatedly talks about 900 chariots retrofitted with iron 
and Sisera's cold-blooded heart. Amen. He knew what he was, he had seen the cost of war. He had been in battles. He'd seen some great victories and some devastating losses, and he just didn't know if he could do it again. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had a word from God and you know you've got a word from God, but you're just tired? You're just scared. You don't know if you can re-engage. Maybe you're in this room and you're believing God for your marriage. Maybe you're believing God for your kids, a loved one. Maybe you're in this room and you're dealing with some mental health issues and you're just tired and you're just worn out. Listen, I'm, I'm here. I see you. I hear you, but I'm telling you, don't ever stop fighting. If you're in this room and you, are, you have a devastating health diagnosis, don't give up. Don't let fear have its way. Sometimes what the enemy does is he blinds us with the 900 chariots when there's 10,000 men behind us. There are more that are for us than are against us, but all we can see are these 900 chariots. I'm here to make a clearing call and let you know that there are more that are for you than that are against you. Judges 4, 12 through 15, the enemy finds out that Barak was advancing, so he summons all every one of his 900 chariots fitted with iron. And for a man who's already fearful, this has got to be his worst nightmare. I can't even imagine the, the cringe that happened. You know, when you stand on the side of a building or you see someone in your, and everything in you just cringes. Yeah. I, this was Barack's worst fear come to life. These 900 chariots I believe at this point he went into hiding. I don't know where he was hiding or what he was doing or what his cover looked like. But in verse 14, we know that Deborah finds him and she says to him, get up and go. Get up, Brock. Let's go. What are you doing? Is this not the day that the Lord has handed the enemy into your hand? I'm here to tell you today that this is the day for some in this room that the Lord is revealing the enemy and what he's been doing in your life. She calls him up. I want us to be encouraged by Barack today to come out of hiding. If you don't have a word from the Lord, I'm gonna give you one right now, you ready? It's time to re-engage. Because this is another thing I know. There are people in this room that may be like Barack and you've stumbled in and you've been engaged in church before, you've been plugged into church before, you've served in the church before, you've been in life groups in the church before, you've gone through all the classes, but you know what the church has in it? People. And people can hurt, but people also heal. The very thing that God uses to hurt you will heal you. I'm telling you today that it's time to re-engage because every single person in this room, we have the capacity to hurt somebody. Amen. Lots of times we think about the hurt we've endured and that's a very real thing, but everyone in this room has the capacity to hurt someone and every single one of you in this room have the capacity to help heal someone. I love that she called Barack up. She was not calling him out. She wasn't saying, Barack, why are you hiding, you sissy? Get up. Is there another commander I can get? You're not doing your job. She looks at him and she says, come on, get up. She's not calling him out. That would cause shame and that would cause embarrassment. And that's not kingdom. She was not calling him out. She was calling him up. Up to the next level, up to the next victory. Is God calling you up today? Let us be encouraged by Barack to be vulnerable. He says, if you go, I'll go. If you don't go, I'm not going. 
I don't want anyone in this room to underestimate the level of vulnerability and humility it took for this military commander to ask this woman for help. Amen. Right. Pride and vulnerability cannot coexist. They are polar opposites. You know, when you're in kindergarten, Pastor Eddie talks about a book, Everything I Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, just talking about the fundamental things that's just inherently in humans that is developed in kindergarten. And I'm here to tell you, in kindergarten, if you need help, what do you do? You raise your hand. You use your words. In this culture, we, are, we think we should have all the answers. And we shouldn't have. We're not designed to have all the answers. I can tell you that whatever you're going through in this room, there is somebody that has an answer for you. There's somebody that has what you need. There's no way there's not. We have to be vulnerable enough to say, I don't know. And I need a little bit of help. And I'm scared. And I don't think I can do this without you. That's good stuff. We can be encouraged by Barack to be brave because God is with us and he will never, ever, ever, ever leave us, never forsake us. There's neither height nor depth nor anything in all creation that can separate us for the love that's in Christ Jesus. This is not just words. I'm telling you this is truth. You need to know that it's okay to be scared, but I want to challenge you today to be scared and still do it. Fear is a natural emotion. We can't deny that. But we have to be brave and courageous and do the thing anyway. I want you to know this morning that God is not mad at you for being fearful. He's not mad. He's not mad at a single soul in this room. But if you let fear drive your decisions, you will miss out on a victory that was intended for you. Because God is going to accomplish his will in the earth and he wants to use you. But when you shrink back because of fear, he will 100% jump over you and go to the next person. Amen. I don't want that to be said of me. I want to encourage you that sometimes when you re-engage, it looks worse before it gets better. But hang on and don't. If it's worse right now, than it was before you engaged, the enemy is overplaying his hand in your life. So God gave Deborah the word to go into battle. Deborah and Barack went into battle, but I want us to be inspired today by the wild goat that won the battle. So we're gonna go to Judges 4, 16 through 24. I know I'm reading a lot of scripture, but I don't think this is a very familiar passage, so I just want you to see it. I want you to love Deborah. I want you to love Barack. When you leave today, I want you to envy Jael, okay? Are you ready? So we're going to read 4.16. Barak pursued the chariots and the army as far as Herosheth Hogium. Um, and all Sisera's tro troops fell by the sword. Not a man was left. Sisera, meanwhile, fled on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, because there was an alliance between King Jabin of Hazor and the family of Heber the Kenite. Jael went out to meet Sisera and said to him, Come, my lord, come right in. Don't be afraid. So he entered the tent, and she covered him with a blanket. I'm thirsty, he said. Please give me some water. She opened a skin of milk, gave him a drink, and covered him up. Stand in the doorway of the tent, he told her. If someone comes by and asks you, is anyone there, say no. But Jael, Heber's wife, are you ready? Picked up a tent peg and a hammer, went quietly over to him while he lay fast asleep, exhausted. She drove the tent peg through his temple into the ground, and he died. Just then Barak came by and pursued a sister, and Jael went out to meet him. Come, she said, I will show you the man you're looking for. So he went in with her, and there lay Sisera with a tent peg through his temple, dead. On that day, 
God subdued Jabin, king of Canaan, before the Israelites, and the hand of the Israelites pressed harder and harder against Jabin, king of Canaan, until they destroyed him. I mean, this wild goat, she's wild. Like, I, I don't know. Like, she's salty, and she's courageous, and I don't know. I just relate to her in some kind of way. Of all the people that I could have spoke about this morning, Mary, sweet, subservient Mary, or Hannah, you know. No, I had to pick these two wild, brave warriors, and I'm okay with that. So Jael's name means wild goat. She looked up, and the enemy was standing in her tent. Her family had an alliance with the enemy. He asked her, the enemy asked her for a place to hide, which the enemy will do because he he thrives in hiding. He thrives in darkness. That's why there's freedom that comes when you say the words and bring it to the light. He wants to hide in your home. He wants to hide in your thoughts. He wants to hide so he can have his way with you. He asked for water. And she gave him curdled milk. That, I mean, that takes some chutzpah. What I found out was that the, the, the curdled milk, well, hold on, we'll get to that. She drove a tent peg through his temple and into the ground, and he died. I want us to look at Judges chapter 5, verse 24 through 27, because it elaborates a little bit in this song of Deborah that it's called, and it says, Most blessed of women be Jael, the wife of Heber the Kenite, most blessed of the tent-dwelling women. He asked for water, and she gave him milk. In a bowl fit for nobles, she brought him curdled milk. Her hand reached out for the tent peg, her right hand for the workman's hammer. She struck Sisera, She crushed his head. She shattered and pierced his temple. At her feet, he sank. At her feet, there he lay. At her feet, he he sank. He fell. Where he sank, there he fell, dead. I want us to look at Jael because there's so much meat in this portion of Scripture. J.L. was a tent-dwelling woman. In modern-day context, what that means is that she was a homemaker. She she was a tent-dweller. She was a traditional homemaker of that time. The enemy came to her door, but she uh, got—this is the reason I think she was a mama. This is the reason I think that she— drove a tent peg through his head, I think this is a mama bear on steroids. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you get too close to my babies, and I will cut you. (laughs) So she was a homemaker. I believe that she was a mom, and we can be inspired by her because the first thing that she did Well, she came out of covenant. Don't you think that when she killed Sisera, the commander of the king's army, that she might have come out of covenant, out of a peace treaty, out of an alliance? There's some people in this room today that you've come through these doors, and the enemy has been comfortable in your house. He's been comfortable in your house because of the things you watch on TV, because of the things you listen to and read, Because of how you speak to each other in your home, the enemy has been comfortable there. But I'm telling you today that Deborah wasn't the only prophet because I believe that when Jael crushed the enemy's head, that she was also telling the enemy, this is what what you got coming. She dealt ruthlessly with the enemy. You do not play with sin. Sin, listen to me, sin is a very serious thing. 
There is a real God. There is a real enemy. And he has a real purpose. And that is to steal from you, to kill you, and to destroy you. It's, very, it's all right here. There's no new tricks. He doesn't care how old you are. He doesn't care how young you are. He don't care how young you are. He doesn't care which side of the tracks you live on, how much money you make, or where your kids go to school. He is no respecter of persons. He wants to kill you, destroy you, and steal everything good that God has for you. We don't patty cake with sin. Don't play with sin. Destroy it. Utterly annihilate it. She defeated the enemy with a tent peg and a hammer. And this is what I want to say about that. I believe that this tent peg and this hammer was an everyday tool to her. I believe that every time they moved and she had to put that tent up while her husband was out hunting and gathering and bringing back the food, I believe it got kind of monotonous sometimes. I believe this mom got tired of putting another tent peg into the tent, another move, another setup, another tear down, another day, another dollar, more monotony. Can anyone relate? We just had the privilege of having my oldest son, my daughter-in-law, my two grandkids come stay with us for about three weeks while they transitioned into a new home. And you know, I'm living my best life. I'm like, bring me the babies. We're going to just have the best time. And we did. I mean, do it again in a heartbeat. The first week was all fun and games, but after the second week of watching them get the kids up, get them fed, get them to school, get them from school, get them home, feed them supper, do the homework, do the baths, get them in bed, and then all the next day have to get up and do it again. I mean, I got tired just watching them. Like, I had forgot about that grind. I'm like, what do you need? I'm walking around like, what do you need me to do? Can I do something? They do it masterfully and tirelessly, and I feel like there's a lot of people in this room that can relate. But I want to ask you this morning, what is in your hands? What is it that you do every single day? It may be at your job. It may be in school. It may be with your children. It could be take the lid off the box, fill in the blanks. The things that you are doing today, if you are intentional with it, can be victories in the future for you. Nothing is by accident. Everything is by design. Keep doing what you're doing, and there will be a reward. You will use it in your future. Trust what I'm telling you. I want you to know that her daily disciplines became deadly weapons, and we can be inspired by that. And isn't her story the gospel? The enemy thought he had the victory when she handed him that curdled milk, which, by the way, in that day was a delicacy. I know when we go to the desert, they try to give us camel's milk, and that is a delicacy. Now, I'm not drinking it. But in this day, curdled milk in a bowl for nobles, like it says in in chapter 5, was a delicacy. Like, he would have expected that drink. He would have expected, like, that was an honorable hospitality move on her behalf. And isn't that what happened? The enemy has been living on this earth for thousands of years. Jesus dies on a cross, and he thinks he has won the day. He didn't realize that his front door was about to be kicked in and that Jesus was coming in to take the keys to death, hell, and the grave. With two pegs and a hammer, they hung Jesus on a cross and he died and he took all of our sins and he nailed him there. And you know what he requires of us? Not a whole lot. Ask him into your heart. He did it because he loves us. 
He hung there for us. I see the gospel in J.L.'s story. It's, it's so good. The enemy thought that he had won when he was hanging there. He thought he had the victory. He thought he had the victory when J.L. handed him a bowl of curdled milk. Little did he know that his head was about to be crushed. And listen, listen, because when I was hearing the head crushing and I thought, wait a minute, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. Genesis chapter 3. There was a, you know, in the garden, there's Adam, there's Eve, there's a tree, there's some bad decisions, right? Adam had his punishment, Eve had her punishment, the enemy had his punishment. Are you ready for this? Genesis 3.14, so the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and every beast of the field. On your belly you will go, you will eat the dust you will eat in all the days of your life, and I will put enmity between you and the woman. Do you know, woman of God? <sighs> so good. Do you know that when, that when God wanted to inflict punishment on Satan, that he put a hatred between us and him. You are, you are what God uses. You're not exclusively what God uses. But God does. Do you, you ever hear the statement that there's power in a praying mom? When a woman prays, it's powerful. You know why? I see it in Jael's story. He showed up at her door he had had his, there was an alliance. He had had his way with her family for generations. And Pastor Darian preached it a couple Wednesdays ago. It ran in her family until it ran into her. And my prayer is that your eyes are open tonight. And you, today, but today it stops because his head has been crushed. Here it says in 15, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed, and he, Jesus, will crush your head. And you will merely strike his heel. You know that's good. You know it is. That's so good. When God executed punishment, he put enmity between the enemy and woman. I want you to know that I'm standing on this platform today because of the power of a praying woman. She didn't give birth to me, but because of her seed, our generational line has changed. Because of her seed, I'm on this platform today. Because of her seed, because of her prayers, Chris Smith is sitting on the front row. Because of her prayers, Joey is leading worship. My mother is in the nursery today leading your babies in Bible stories and Bible studies because of the power of a praying woman. Because her seed went on way after she was gone. If you're a mother and you're in this room today, I want to encourage you, never, ever stop praying. I don't care what you see. I don't care what you feel. Feelings are liars. They get to ride. They don't get to drive. I don't care what you see. I don't care what you feel. Keep praying for your children. Your prayers are so powerful. And they will put the enemy to flight. So... In closing, we have been challenged by Deborah, the powerful, the powerful woman, the leader. I think everyone in this room can be challenged to come up to the next level with our leadership. We've been encouraged by Barack to be real. Just be real. If you're scared, say you're scared. Do it anyway. If you can't, just ask for help. It'll be okay. And we have been inspired by JL, this wild goat. I think it's an interesting tidbit of information for you to know that JL was a Kenite. 
And the last time I read my Bible, Jacob slash Israel did not have any sons named Kenneth. That went over a whole lot better the first service. (laughs) In modern day, like in our context, I will just say it like this. She was not a part of the children of Israel. She was not a part of the family of God. But on that day, when the enemy came knocking on her door, when the enemy was revealed, when the enemy was exposed, she put a stop to it. And you can do that today as well. My prayer is that you won't walk out of those doors the same way you walked in. My prayer is that your eyes have been enlightened, that strongholds have been torn down, and that you leave this room empowered to take the enemy down. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you're in this room and you're not a part of the family of God. You really don't even know much about this God that I'm talking about. And Maybe today you say, you know what? I want to come out of alliance with the enemy and I want to come into the kingdom of God. If that's you, would you raise your hand at this time? Or maybe you're away from God. I see your hand. I see your hand. Anyone else? I want to know this, God. I want to know this. I see your hands in the risers. I want to know this, God. I want to be a part of this family. Maybe you're away from God and you know it's time to come back. I see your hand. I just want to pray for you today. I see your hands on the floor. Thank you, Jesus. I see your hand over to my right. I'm just going to pray for you. I see your hand in the risers. Father, we just come to you right now in Jesus' name. God, I thank you. God, I thank you for your word. It's so, so good. So good. You're so kind. God, you just reveal and you just show yourself to us in new ways every single day. And I'm, th- I'm thankful for that, God. And I pray, God, that as people leave today, that they will recognize that they're being called up to the next level, God. That they've been challenged in their leadership and their influence. That they're going to reach out for help if they need help. And that they're going to come to you or come back to you, God, and just be in your kingdom and your family. Everyone in this room, under the sound of my voice, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart. I thank you that you died on a cross. And you rose from the dead three days later. And you did it for me. And I'm going to serve you every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What a powerful word, Bob. Come on, let's give it up right now. Come on, that was an amazing word. It ran in my family until it ran to... Come on now. If you just gave your life to Christ, go back to our Fresh Start area. We have a wonderful resource that we want to put in your hand. And